So do you ever have one of those moments when someone says something and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. And then you walk away and you go, wait a second, what the heck did they just say to me? Well, that happened to me recently when I was talking to my neighbor and I now have my neighbor. If you're watching us live on YouTube, I have my neighbor literally sitting next to me. We're practically in each other's laps because I need her to tell a little story. So thank you so much for being here and let's dive in. All right, Joanna. Hi. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> thank you for being here. Okay. So, so this is Joanna's first interview. So we have to be kind to her and also give her a little grief. Um, so the other day, I'm out walking my dogs. You stop to say hi. And just for the listeners, Joanna has recently got a new dog, what, a couple of years ago? Yeah. Okay. She's, she's got this. He's my COVID dog. She's, oh, she, okay. She got a COVID puppy a couple of years ago. He's a little bit of a wild child and he's super cute. And so I stopped to talk to her. She's in her car. She's on her way to go swimming. And we're just, I don't even know what we're talking about. And she says, oh yeah, well, my job right now is to outlive my dog. And I laugh, of course. <laughs> and then she says, well, I'm turning 81 next week. And I'm like, and then I walk away and I'm like, wait a second. What did she just say to me? Because if you're uh, watching us on camera, Joanna is, she's tall. She's slender. She has the best posture of anyone I've ever seen in my life. I just assumed that she was a ballerina. Like I've always thought, in fact, I tell everybody, oh yeah, yeah, she was in dance. <laughs> and then I said to her, I was like, can you come talk to people on the podcast? And she's like, I wasn't in dance. <laughs> so tell us your story. Thank you for being here. And tell us like, I mean, I just want to know, like I'm literally calling this podcast episode, be like Joanna, because when this podcast episode drops, you've just had your 81st birthday. She rode her bike over here to do the podcast interview. Okay, guys, I have to tell you, if I was going over to her house, I would have driven my car because it's a hundred degrees out, but nope, she rides her bike over. So tell us a little bit about how you got so active and what your lifestyle is. Mm, probably, I think I, now do I talk to you, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, I've always liked to move. I've been a mover my whole life. Um, I rode horses when I was a kid. Then I went into gymnastics. Nobody told me that if you're six feet tall, you probably <laughs> picked the wrong sport, but I tried. Gymnastics got me into dance. Um, I, I majored in physical education because I liked to move and I thought, well, that would be a good job. And then physical education became dance. And ultimately I wound up at the University of Houston um, with my PhD as the head of the dance program there. So I spent 21 years telling other people what to do with their bodies um, while I was at the University of Houston. And then I retired in 1998. Is that far enough? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good start. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So here you are, you retired in 1998. Yeah. And you've been telling people how to move and what to do with their bodies. And then what you do is you don't stop. Right. You just keep going. So what yeah. happens next? Like, what are your what are your favorite activities? What do you start doing? Do you do things differently? So I started swimming laps. Um, when I first got to the pool, I didn't really know how to breathe. So then I found a couple of older friends that were master swimmers and they gave me a video and that taught me how to breathe and how to uh, turn at the end of the pool. And I just uh, kept swimming because it was nicer actually after menopause it was nicer to be in water where I could stay cool and be active than to be exercising. Yeah. So that was, that's been my main, uh, I would say probably my main um, aerobic exercise, which I know I'm not supposed to just do that because you're supposed to do weight bearing exercises too. So my weight bearing exercise is Tai Chi. Oh, right. How, how could yeah. I not even remember yeah. this? Yeah. So just so you know, Joanna got me in her backyard trying to show oh, me how to yes, do right. <laughs> trying to show me how to do Tai Chi. I am the most uncoordinated person in the world. She's so gentle with me. And I'm like, my nose is going to the right and my toes are going to the left. And she's like, no, no, let's try it this way. <laughs> oh, that was our COVID. That, that was that during was right. COVID. Yeah, that was right. Said, yeah, let's do Tai Chi during COVID. I forgot about that. Yay. I had, I yeah. had forgotten until you just mentioned yeah. it. So you've been ta doing Tai Chi for how long? Well, I, I tried it a couple of times when I was dancing. 
thought it was the most boring thing I'd ever <laughs> done in my whole life because it was so slow. Right. Then I picked it up again in my 60s and my partner spouse person Frank and I took a Tai Chi class together and we liked doing it together and um, so we learned the whole 108 form the long Whoa. form which takes about 15 15 minutes to do and um, it's very slow it's very about balance it's very about mind which uh, once I retired one of the things I wanted to do was keep my mind engaged. And I didn't know exactly how to do that, but Tai Chi did it really well. Uh, learning to bird and identify birds oh, was right. the other thing that I started right. to do. And it's also a nice um, slow motion kind of a thing. You walk, you get out in nature, you but you attend to things. So uh, there's this combination of mind and body that's working for me pretty well. Wow, so you're swimming, you're yeah. doing Tai Chi. Tai Chi kind of takes care of the the mobility and the resistance. So you don't, yeah, you don't need to do the stretching and the yoga because tai, tai Chi does that. For well, you, I tried it? yoga and I, and I had a, a what I call the Nazi yoga teacher, <laughs> and it also it hooked into my competitiveness. Oh, and I thought, yeah. oh, I can go a little further. I can do it. And then my body said, wait a minute, wait a minute. This isn't what you're supposed to be doing here. But I couldn't let go of the competitiveness. And there's not much competition when you're just swimming along by your own self, uh, right? swimming, or when you're doing Tai Chi, it's absolutely not competitive. That's, you so. know, that's a really good point because yeah. like I've noticed, I don't do yoga a lot because I'll do the same thing. Like mm -hmm. I'll be doing my pose and then I'll see somebody else. And I'm like, oh man, they're doing it better yeah. or they're yeah. doing it further or whatever the yeah. word is. And I'm like, oh, I need to try harder. Forget that, yeah. right? It's yeah. like all in your, just yeah. like, contained self-contained so basically your exercise is self-contained exercises well it? and and one of the things i had to remind myself is i already did that one of the reasons why i loved dance and i got into dance is it was all about seeing what the limits of your own body were and so i already you know i already did that up till the time i was 56 I said okay let's see how much you can do with this body and i thought i don't need to do that anymore but i had to let go of that mindset. Right. If that makes any sense. Oh, it makes but, total sense. Yeah. I'm yeah. still working on that. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, once once an athlete. Yeah. And especially yeah. a competitive athlete, always. Yeah, well, yeah they're, they're a little twinkle when there's somebody in the other lane and you go, oh, I can go, yeah, you know, I can I go know, as much right. as the other, the other lane. Yeah. Yeah. It's so you just yeah. can't help yeah. yourself. It's it's like a dog, I don't know, a dog chasing <laughs> a rabbit, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh, so all right. I have another question because you had you had surgery mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago. How long ago? Uh, one year ago in August. Holy smokes! Okay, less than a year ago. Yes, you had back surgery. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. A laminectomy. And what is that? A laminectomy. Oh well, let me back up a little bit because um, uh, I long time ago somebody said, "As tall as you are, you will have back problems." And as active as I am. Uh, if I really do have back problems and I've probably squished all the juice out of all my discs. Mm, okay. um, so I've gotten used to saying, oh, that hurts, you know, shift around and do something else. But um, last spring, spring 2022, uh, there was a different kind of a pain and it was a pain and it was uh, a, a numbness all the way down in my leg. So that when I stood up for five minutes, I, I couldn't. Um, oh, when wow. I sat down, I couldn't. I mean, when I sat down, everything kind of released again. So I finally went to a physiatrist who sent me to an MRI, and the MRI showed that I had um, spinal stenosis. Okay. Which I had to learn is that your wonderful body, this body that I absolutely love, was had decided it would keep growing bone inside my vertebrae. Oh. And it's like a little bone spurs is how okay. I understand it. And this bone keeps growing until it squeezes the nerves that are in the middle of your vertebrae so that they can't function. And so then your legs go numb and said, there's lots of pain and you can't do anything. And I tried physical therapy. I tried my own stretching exercises, you know, I, sure. people try to figure out how to deal with their own body. And finally, this one, I said, I don't think I can do this one. And when I met the neurosurgeon, he said, well, this is why. And he showed me my, uh, um, my MRI on a screen. Right. And he said, see this vertebrae? And I said, yeah. He said, see that white stuff? I said, yeah. He said, that's space. 
That's one of your good vertebrae. Now look at this one, blacker in pitch, black <laughs> as your shirt. And he said, there is no room inside really? your vertebrae for your nerve. Okay. And so he told me he would take his little microscope and scoop and carefully take my, my nerves out of the way. And then he'd take his little drill and he'd drill that bone away and then he'd do a little flossing I love to do a little <laughs> flossing and then he'd sew me back up and I'd be fine and I was wow wow <laughs> is that so, amazing yeah I mean because I know I know friends who have told me they had bone yeah. spurs in their back and they're like still not yeah. doing anything years later oh. so well I couldn't figure out anything else to do this one was yeah. when I thought I don't think I can mentally move this away I don't think I can exercise it away. I couldn't think of anything that I had the tool to do. Right. And so I thought when I, you know, when I got the right surgeon and trust right. me, if, we, if anybody's listening to this, uh, really ask a lot of surgeons. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. I had a ear surgery a number of years ago mm -hmm. and I interviewed five or six surgeons yeah. and I told them I'm interviewing you. And they're looking at me like you little snot. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, if you're going to cut on me, I want to know yep. who you are. <laughs> yep. Same, I have the same mindset. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and the fact that also that you used everything you had in your arsenal first. Yeah. Right. You like okay, you know your body. We all we know our bodies, and if we trust our bodies, then we just try and work with them. Yeah. And then there's that point sometimes where you can't. Yeah. Right. And, and, I, so and I, good old swimming. You know, I thought okay, something's wrong. Let me see if I can release all that. So I'd go to the deep end of the pool and just hang there mm -hmm. and let my my legs just drop, drop, drop. And that felt pretty good. So then I'd try to do my laps. And then when I couldn't even kick my legs, I thought, oh, I think I need somebody else's help. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, okay. Yeah. So how'd you recover? Because less than a year recovery, that's huge. <laughs> What'd you do? So it's a 45 minute operation. Uh, when you come out, you feel great course you're on drugs and stuff um and, <laughs> you should and go i ahead. said you know i i think i should go to the bathroom and they said well get up and go to the bathroom so i walked to the bathroom no pain and i um i probably had to take i can't remember this part but i think i probably had to go out in a wheelchair because they always take you there but then when i got home everything was felt good wow and so the next day and i know i've told you this one but we'll tell everybody else so the next day i thought oh they tell you no lifting no bending and no twisting for several couple of months all right and so i thought okay no bending lifting twisting they didn't say anything about reaching up so i saw some trees that needed trimming and so i got my oh, man. and i'm and i'm trimming 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 my trees and then I left them all ground and I said, Frank, you, I can't bend. You have to come all up. <laughs> I can't lift. I just so got he, all the, these three friends. So, yeah. And, but I, I got in trouble with a lot of people. I bet that. you did. Yeah. But, but <laughs> you the, were okay. The cert, I was fine. And okay. the surgeons finally told me, he said, you can't hurt or you can't um, do something to um, ruin my surgery. All you can do is cause yourself pain by okay. doing something that I have told you not to do. Okay, well, that's good. But I didn't ever feel yeah. any pain. I mean, and the, and the, the numbness and the, um, all the pain that I'd had before was gone as soon as I got up off the operating table. Wow, congratulations. So I am a, I'm a proponent huge. of laminectomies for spinal stenosis <laughs> with the right guy. Right, with the right yeah, one. With yeah, the right with the right yeah. interview. Yeah. yeah, wow. So. Yeah. All right, you, you've done all <laughs> kinds of things. And I know that for your birthday, okay, your birthday, you're going line dancing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I like line dancing, wow. <laughs> so what's next? I mean, you've got mm. all these plans, don't you? What's oh, next? I heard, no, I don't have that many plans. It's more like um, opening the door and seeing what's there. Okay. More than anything okay. else. Um, uh, I found that I, I really am not as comfortable in a car as long as I used to be. So I can't really sit in one place as long. So I'm going to have to figure out that one. Mm, um, yeah. It's too damn hot to go out and walk. So I'm not going to right. do that. Um, right. So my, I might take my dog dock diving. Dock diving. Oh, yeah. Are yeah. you going to dive with him? No, no. We'll, <laughs> all, we'll just all paddle around in the pool together. So we'll do that. So I don't know. I don't know what's next, Kelly. I really don't. Um, it's kind of a 
oh, let's see what's out there. Well, that's let's, cool. I mean, yeah. I love the idea of just opening the door because yeah. I mean, for years you have traveled everywhere, yeah, um, helping and looking at birds, yeah, and doing. Yeah. Yep. Tell us about your bird, just real quick. You you do a lot of bird um, counting yeah, with I, the Audubon. I, I, yeah, I got involved with Houston Audubon, which has a really cool bird sanctuary in High Island. And so I've done a lot of volunteering there. And then um, we have things called birdathons, And you go out and you see as many birds as you can in a day. Okay. And um, my teams have been pretty nice to me and pretty good. And so we've won some trips. I got to go to Ecuador and, and I've Whoa. been to some, you know, you, the one thing about birding is there's a lot of cool places you can go that are outdoors. Um, and your, your reason for going is to see the birds, but the places you get to go are fabulous. Right. Yeah. So, right. It's, so it's more of an adventure than it is you know, anything else. So. Wow. Just, I love you know, it. I'm just waiting to see, well, what's next? Yeah. I'm so, kind of waiting to see what's yeah. next because I don't know. But, okay. but I don't think it will be, um, it won't be dependent on that I, I can't do something, you know what I mean, right. in terms of, uh, I fixed it, I got it, you know. Done. Yeah, no, you yeah. fixed it. Yeah. I mean, you're not yeah. slowing down. I mean, if no. you're going line dancing for your 81st birthday yeah. and probably doing Tai Chi that morning and, well, maybe, you yeah. know, I mean, and I love the idea that it's just opening the door to see what's next because we don't always have to have plans. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can be surprised. Yeah. And being surprised can be really awesome. Well, I think because you have to, you have to pay attention to who you are right now mm -hmm. and who you are right now is there's part of who you used to be, but some of who you used to be might not be interested in who you are right now. And you have to kind of, there's a little play for me anyway, mm -hmm. uh, about finding out is that what I used to want to do? Or is that who I am now wanting to do? So, I, you know, so I kind of just spend a lot of time listening if I can. Yeah. Like <laughs> listening to me. To you. Yeah. To the inner and to voice. my body. And to right? my body, which, you know, was horrible. A year ago, I was listening to this body go, ow, ow, ow. And, you know, now it's going, thank you, thank now you, thank like, you. Now it's like, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Now. <laughs> it's like, now, yeah. now, now. Yeah. 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 That's such a good point because I caught myself the other day. I used to do, you know, small triathlons and things like that. And a friend of mine was doing this race and she's like, hey, you want to come join me? And I'm like, yeah. Why? And I was like, wait a second. You know what's on the other side of that. On the other side of that is pain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on the other side of that is your yeah. body saying, why did you yeah. just do that? Yeah. So sometimes yeah. you do. You yeah. have to adjust, yeah. but not stop. Right. Yeah, I, I had that happen just this morning. I was in the pool. Um, I like to do either um, a mile, which is 72 lengths, or I like to, if it's a really good day, then I like to do a length for every year I've been on the planet. So then I can pump it up to 80 and next week, 81. Right. Okay. Right. And this morning, the water was so warm that it was literally making me feel sick. Oh, yeah. And I thought, I got to make my mile. And I thought, no, I don't. <laughs> it's my mile right. and so we and so me and my body i said let's stop at 50 so we stopped at 50 yeah that was that's fun. brilliant yeah isn't it yeah so, there's we have nothing to prove and yeah. everything became but you, well but you know oh you know i, I can know do, i can do it i, know. I can do it that can voice it. is always back oh, there isn't yeah. it but you don't have to you don't no have you to. don't have to yeah i know i have um some people going with me on a trip I've got coming up and, and they've had some injuries. And so I have a second guide coming along to do some of the shorter hikes. And all three of them were like, Oh my gosh, I don't want to do shorter hikes. And, and I said, but you want to have fun, don't you? Like, I know you can do the longer hikes, but why not go a little shorter and just really enjoy it? It makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes you don't even, you forget that that's an option. Yeah. That's the other thing you have to, I don't know when you, when you learn that, oh, doing less is an option and it's an okay one, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is an okay one. Yeah. <laughs> I, we had a conversation on one of my coaching calls the other day about, um, you don't have to be perfect, right? Yeah. Imperfect is fine. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh man, that's a tough one. Yeah. But, but I don't, I'm lucky. Life. I don't happen to have perfectionist genes good yeah for some reason i didn't get those but that, that's good enough it's yeah good you just enough. got the competition genes <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> oh well okay before we wrap up and say happy birthday to you anything that you would like like 
words of wisdom for someone who's thinking that, oh my gosh, like I, I don't feel great right now. What can I do to, to start feeling better? Or what can I do to start moving more consistently might be a better question. Any suggestions? I like to lengthen. Okay. I like to, uh, I, I'm pretty protective of my joints. And so I like to um, find ways, like I think that's why swimming's working for me because it buoys, buoys me up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, and I, I've always liked to see, um, uh, it's called, um, well, not lengthen, but uh, shoot, there's a new word for that. But anyway, the but it's about, ex piece for your... yeah, it's about opening the joints, right. um, uh, making yourself a little bit longer, a little bit more. Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, I know what you mean. Like, yeah. like stretching out like a yeah. cat. Stretching so, that out. It, so that you're not all a bundle of nerves, a bundle of tightness. Mm -hmm. If you can just let go and find a way to... Um, be more gentle i think yeah maybe that's a better way that's that's a really yeah. good point yeah yeah because I, I think that like like the mobility is probably the word yeah. they use now for yeah. a lot of things like choosing that when i tell people to yeah. choose that over yeah. you know their cardio yeah. or choose that over something else right. they're like oh no like you know that doesn't do anything for me but it does it, it gives you that flow right. in your body and your bones. amplitude that's the word amplitude. We, used, we learned that yeah. in gymnastics way back a while that you know you're trying to be as much as you can be. And, and that to me is about in, in the joints as well. Well, that's kind so, of life, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here. I just like, oh, I'm so excited and thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we're good.